something um, here by what he does in John chapter 7. Um, and here's the exhortation. Understand life. Understand life and what life is about from Jesus here. We can watch Jesus here and how he considers going to the Feast of Tabernacles, how he operates once he's there, and it clues us in about life and how we're to consider what life is about and what our lives are about from the way, uh, from the way he treats uh, this situation here. Now we see from his brothers, starting in this passage, what the world thinks life is about. Did you catch that there? The brothers say, you know, and they're not even believing. You know, maybe they're encouraging Jesus to go and show himself in Jerusalem because they want him to get in trouble. (laughs) Who knows? It doesn't say exactly, but you see there in verse 4, it says, they didn't believe yet. Now, at least, you know, James, his brother, his half-brother comes to believe. He writes the the, the epistle of James. Um, But... um, The world thinks many different things are what life is about. They think success in work is what life is about. Uh, Respect of other people is what life is about. Um, Popularity is what life is about. Um, Having lots of stuff is what life is about. Um, uh, Having uh, success in whatever you're doing or developing some skill is what life is about. Um, Even, you know, Having a a successful family and being declared a a great dad or a great mom is what life is about. And that's, you know, there's nothing wrong uh, with those things. But Jesus shows us here um, that having a comfortable life or that uh, living your life for the acclaim of others is not what life is about. Um, Rather, A, here we see here in this passage that Jesus teaches you that life is not about public recognition. Life is not about public recognition. We see in verse uh, verse one here, um, after this, Jesus went around in Galilee purposefully staying away from Judea. Um, there's a crowd in Judea and Jesus stays, stays away from it. Look at verse 3. Um, verse 3, Jesus' brothers say to him, you ought to leave here and go to Judea so that your disciples may see the miracles you do. In other words, be public. Show off. Have recognition. Uh, then further, further down, uh, we see here verse 4, just the next, next verse. No one wants to become a public figure No one who wants to become a public figure acts in secret. Since you're doing these things, show yourself to the world. And Jesus says, no thanks. I'm not trying to become a public figure or show myself to the world. And then when he arrives, when he arrives there, um, he goes around not publicly. Verse 10, however, after his brothers had left for the feast, Jesus went also. So it's always his, his intent to go there. Um, that was the right thing to do to celebrate this feast. That was the law of God. But he goes, he went also, not publicly, but in secret. And so we get along with what we saw Jesus say in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 6, 1 through 15. Don't even do your acts of righteousness to be seen by men. Just know simply that God sees what you do in secret and you will receive your reward in full from him. But don't live your life to be seen by men because if you're seen by men and awarded by them, you've received your reward in full. (laughs) Nothing left for you. Um, So we see here in this passage, life is not about public recognition and the world tells us the opposite. One of the condemnations of Saul, King Saul, one of the condemnations of Absalom is both of those guys build monuments to themselves. And so those things are used against them by the writer of First and Second Samuel to prove that, that David was the guy and that these guys shouldn't be followed uh, nor Saul's descendants be followed because they were about themselves and receiving recognition. Even after Samuel comes right to King Saul and says, 
What is this you've done? You've offered a sacrifice by yourself? You're not one who's qualified to act, uh, offer a sacrifice for yourself. And Saul says, oh, yeah, 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 I'm sorry. But please come with me before the people and honor me. That's what Saul's about, the, the, the king that God rejects, one who, who wants public recognition for what he's doing. So have your life not be about public recognition. If it happens to you, great, but don't care about it. And don't seek it. Because Jesus shows us he doesn't seek it. Um, it's something the Father brings upon him in the end at the last day. B, we also see in this passage that Jesus teaches you that your life and efforts in life are to be used for, for the good. For the good and to help and to the help of others. What's our life to be about? Working for the good of other people. What's our life to be about? Working for to help other people. My life is here. God has given me life to help other people, to make their lives better, not to build myself up, but to do what I can to make things easier or better for the people around me. So Genesis 12, 3, God said this in his covenant to Abraham, um, I will bless all peoples through you. You, Abraham, who have believed, here's your role in the world. I will bless people through you. And that's to be our role as individuals in the world, that people would be blessed by knowing us, by people are, are to be blessed by being around us, that as an employee, our employer is blessed because of the job we do or the people we're working for or our customers or the people we're over at work are blessed because of the job we're doing. And that's our concern that the people there, like Eddie and Ponder said, their little signs they have around here, never make one of our customers feel like you're a bot, that they're a bother to you. Isn't that great? But that's, that's for our lives. It's a very biblical thing. We, you know, when someone says, oh, thanks for doing this, we say, don't worry about it. Glad to do it for you. Um, and, and just do it. Just take care of it. Um, because that, that's why we're here on the earth and why we're, he hasn't zipped us up to heaven already. Um, Romans 12, 13. Here's what Paul says about this, about living your life for the good of others, living your life for the help of others. Romans 12, 13. Share with God's people who are in need and pra practice hospitality. Verse 14 of Romans 12, 12, 14. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. And then he goes on in Romans 12 to verse 20. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. That's why we're here. We're not here to say, oh, he's my enemy. He's not going to build me up and glorify me and, and, and call me great in front of others. So, you know, who cares about him? But rather, we bless him. We, we, we do something to help him. Romans 2, 3. Paul, right before saying Jesus is our example of this, he says, what is Jesus as an example of? He says this to us as Christians, Philippians 2, 3. Do nothing out of selfish ambition. So your lives are not about ourselves. Do nothing out of selfish ambition. Don't do something so that people say, oh, she's so great. Or, oh, oh man, he's a great guy. Don't do things for that reason. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. But in humility, consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should not look only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. So we use our lives, we live our lives to help people out. Because um, that's what Jesus did. He comes to earth not because things are going to be great for him. He comes to earth because we need it, not because he needs it. He would have continued to be uh, son of God, glorified by all the angels and all the dead saints up in heaven. He would have continued to be that had he never come to earth. But he comes to earth because we needed it to help us for our good, to bless us. And so we walk in his shoes. We don't worry about public acclamation. We just worry about doing good and blessing other people because that's what God calls us to do, just like he called his son Jesus to do it.
So our summary. Summary. People disbelieve for lots of bad reasons that aren't good thinking. We see that in this passage. Um, but this. Knowledge of Jesus. Know this. Knowledge of Jesus. Of his life and his purpose. Why he was here. Knowledge of Jesus. Of his life and purpose. And reasoned thinking about his life and purpose, which John lays out before us here. It doesn't discourage us, but rather it encourages you. It encourages you in your continued faith in and witness for Jesus. So knowledge of Jesus is life and his purpose, and reason thinking about that uh, brings you to be encouraged about your belief in Jesus. You've done the right thing. It encourages you to testify of him to other people because you've thought rightly. You know, you know, you all know more about Jesus than people who persecute you. They've heard things. And they say things based on what they've heard. And their knowledge is so surfacy when they come to you with persecution. And you've studied the scriptures and you've read the scriptures. You know Jesus. You know why he was here. And so this gives us encouragement uh, as we continue in faith and witness of Jesus. And so the second thing there, understanding his life, understanding his life and purpose directs you in yours. As you understand his life and purpose, it directs you in your life and your purpose. That is, your life should not be spent concerned about your glory. Your life, my life should not be concerned about our glory. Um, but about rather, as his was, helping. Your life should be about helping and blessing others instead. Let's pray.